good evening. Grace returned from work more mellow than usual, so I offered to cook in her place. No, this is not a household in which patriarchy rules. Our duties are simply aligned this way. As we sit down at the table, I look at Grace's side or earlier looked at Severin. Their auras are so different. But right now, Grace's aura is darker than usual. Maybe that's why I feel like it's easy to approach her with this. Grace. She's been staring off somewhere looking all gloomy, but that's just a dog. But just like a dog's might. Her ears flicker and she turns towards me. Yes? At school today. Actually, no. Well, yes, but not for the first time. At a cafe after school last week. I randomly met this girl. Actually, no, it wasn't random. She was the, uh... Grace shakes her head. Good grief, you lost me after the first actually. Start over, boy. There's a girl called Saverine. She works at a cafe. She also goes to my school. A girl? Yes, great. What about her? When I look at her, I sense something, I don't know, big. She's intimidating, strange, but also impressive. She's nothing like you. Grace's eyes turn dark. <laughs> Grace's eyes turn dark, clearly focused on my unfortunate choice of words. You did not just mean what you said, am I right? Huh? Oh, oh, no, no, not at all. I'm sorry. For all those books you've read, you sure, you sure seem to be at a loss of words quite often. Is it children's books you're reading? No, scratch that. I know what it is. You're not half bad with words, but you are awful at getting them across through your speech. Don't look down. Look at me. So? What about this savoring? She isn't like anyone I've ever met before. Well, no surprise there, you never meet new people, so that isn't really too strange at all. Even before all this, you were the quietest kid in the class. Do you know how many times I had to forcibly pair people with you because you didn't have any friends? A sharp stinging. She exhales deeply and shakes her head once more. Now it's my turn to apologize, I didn't mean for that to come out the way it did. You haven't caused me any trouble, in fact, you've been a blessing to me. Her demeanor turns mild. So keep your head up, okay? The progress you made the last few years is remarkable. And you as well. The first year together under this roof, I'd already become a stronger person. And if you ask me, it was all thanks to Grace. She assumed the role of my guardian, took me under her wing, and showed me how to navigate out of the labyrinth of nightmares I'd been placed in. Grace reaches out for my arm and gives it a firm squeeze. It's strange, but sometimes a single act like that is all it takes. I know she's with me. I can always count on her support. Grace wasn't always the Grace of 2020. She had always been the bright, pretend older sister of mine. I think she changed for my sake, and for that, I'll always love her. There's no doubt about it. In fact, I've always loved Grace, and I still do. She helped me become who I am, and as her hand depart from my arm, I feel a yearning. I swallow the emotion stuck in my throat and continue on. Savoring. I think she's a lot like us. Grace's eyebrows rise, and her index finger smoothly sweeps across her chin. A moment of silence passes, we stare each other down. Michael? I should have prepared you more for this, but... I'll be honest, I didn't think you'd end up applying for university, much less accepting your position. I thought you'd find a reason to not exit the house, read books all day, every day, and remain the way you had up till now. It all happened so fast, and don't get me wrong, I was happy that this is how it all turned out. I exhale, then close my mouth, I let her words sink in. While you were holed up in there, the world outside moved at its usual pace. I've seen it, okay? If you feel as if the world outside is the same as it always was, I'm sorry to break that illusion for you, because frankly, it's nothing like it. People got hurt. People lost other people dear to them. You're not the only person who suffered a tragedy. Something like this won't be forgotten anytime soon. And people cope differently, alright? No more is a... no way is more right than another. In the face of death, we are all alike. That much is true, but yet, in how we face it, we are different. The world out there is different to how you know it. The attacks of 2018, they set us back. They set us all back. This savoring, do you know how she was affected by the attacks? No. She doesn't talk about herself much. I see. But think about it this way. We aren't what we used to be. Grace looks away as she takes a large swig of beer. Indeed aren't what we used to be. And that's why it's important to keep in mind what happened, and 
what it means to those affected. Everyone makes sense. Get to know her past. Once you have, you'll know why she is like she is. And then you can find out and tell me why I am like I am. Her other arm, the one she touched me with, was resting on the table. I reach out for it. My fingertips meet her arm. Silky smooth skin, supple and warm. I grab a hold of it. You are not alone. Perhaps I've been looking at it all wrong. To our delight, the mood reset after dinner, and Grace said she had something to show me. Sit down right here, I'll be right back. She playfully pushes me onto the sofa and gives me a seductive smile that I didn't expect at all. It sends tingles down my neck. For some reason, I'm suddenly very excited. I can't wait, no matter what it is she has in store. That's the type of person Grace is. Her excitement is always genuine, always contagious. I can hear humming coming from her room, and I hear rustling. Are those pieces of clothing on the floor? Is she undressing? This is not happening. The truth of the matter is that I don't have much experience with women at all. So when a beautiful woman of Grace's caliber gives me one of those smiles and I can hear the sound of undressing, it's hard to keep my composure. I'd like to blame teenage hormones, but we're a bit past that point for it to be a valid excuse. My heart assumes a dangerous pace. Feels as if it could leap out of my throat at any time. Am I having a heart attack? Am I going to die? I intently stare at the entrance to her room. Uh, oh no. I'm just a mere boy. I'm not ready. I never thought this is how it'd go down. I begin to tremble. My palms begin to sweat. I close my eyes for a second. When I open them, a bare leg has been seductively placed vertically along the door frame. It's really happening, huh? Pangs of dizziness hit me. Inch by inch, more of her right thigh is revealed. It appears plump yet firm, even in the claws of gravity. Like an animal watching its prey, I can't bring myself to look away. When I thought her gorgeous leg would continue to unravel forever, her pale skin abruptly cuts off, converting into a dark fabric. What is that? A skirt? A uniform? Then her head peeks out from the door opening. She laughs. Look what I've got! She dances out of her room, making exaggerated pretentious movements, clearly unaware of how I might have interpreted the situation. I feel myself relaxing. Though on some level, I do feel like my hopes and dreams have been crushed. But this was for the best. I'm too pure-hearted for situations like these anyway. The skirt unfolds and goes up her thighs. Once it's settled after the movement, it stretches to right below her knees. It's a uniform. And not nearly as revealing as her exposed thighs had led me to believe. But it is attractive. Fun is even more so, I imagine. Fancy, huh? Or what do you think? Doesn't it suit me? It's the new look for every state employee. They're making guys wear skirts, too. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, now there's an idea. Cute boys in skirts. Yes, please. As shameful as to admit, my eyes are glued to a specific part of the outfit. The price tag. This? It's my level of clearance. Ring, if you will. She points to her chest. Adoring her chest is a red insignia reminiscent of a ruby. Looks a bit cramped. It came out a whisper. Come again? That's cool. It does suit you. But to be fair with her features, she makes most outfits look, look most outfits look cramped. Thanks. The two ranks below me are blue and green. Above me, there's white. I think they kind of look like gems, so I've kind of been calling them sapphire, emerald, ruby, and diamond. I have Final Fantasy VII flashbacks right now. Keep it a secret, okay? For some reason, it's a bit embarrassing. Why? Because it makes you seem like an adult woman still plagued with dreams of being a princess? Precisely because of that. Now shush. She goes on about the insignias. The idea is to distinguish government employees from normal citizens. Feel kind of special now, together with the pay raise and a special work phone, this internet thing is shipping to be quite good for me. You got a pay raise. If I did. Apparently salary is determined by rank now, and now that you mention it, I was originally assigned the Emerald rank. But my boss, the head principal of the entire district, you know? I'm sure I mentioned Elena before, pulled some strings, and in the end, I was given this. She puffs her chest down proudly and points where the ruby insignia once more. Naturally, it entail more work, but I think it'll be worth it. Some administrative duties are as nothing compared to this. In fact, there are a bunch of different perks included. They even implied we could and should wear it in our private life. 
So we'll be able to ride public transport for free and things like that. Really? Yeah, really. Well, good job. You must have done something to deserve it. I don't really know. I mean, it rather seemed to be the course of things with all this new internet business. Sounds a bit excessive from my point of view, but I don't say anything. Though there is one question I have to know the answer to. By the way, who's they? Grace tilts her head as if trying to recall something. Well, it was Elena, of course. And then the visitors who are informing us about the new system. They are from some branch of something or another. They were all wearing diamond insignias. Sorry, I can't quite remember the exact names. Between me and you, I hadn't had my morning coffee yet, so I was a bit out of it. Anyway, cool, huh? Yeah. I'll just swap out of this for now. One second. So, Ruby, huh? The second highest rank. For some reason, I begin to feel strangely proud. I've always thought highly of Grace. I'm sure I mentioned it before, but she's the best, most sympathetic and caring teacher I've ever had. I don't doubt the promotion was unwarranted. I'm proud of you. If anyone deserves it, it's gonna be you. Ah. Her expression turns tender. She walks up to me and embraces me. I come in contact with unexpected softness as she presses herself against me. I hug her back. Right now, my face is in line with her neck. If I had another couple of centimeters of my stature, I wouldn't be in somewhat an awkward position. If she'd been wearing her usual heels, I'd be in real trouble. Or heaven, depending on who you ask, of course. After a while, I'm released from her clutches. We should celebrate this weekend. Let's go out for lunch or something. Maybe you can flash that insignia and get us some discounts. You know what? That's a great idea. Just you, me, and a fantastic meal. It's decided, then. Decided it is. The clock shows 10 p.m. So, it's, they alternate between military time and the a.m. p.m. thing, I should point out. Grace said goodnight, after which she retreated to her room. I should do the same. Back in my room. There's not much here. Books, more books, and that's about it. Yeah, I have a laptop, too, but I haven't used it at all since the internet went down. I used to have a couple online friends whom I discussed books with, but I wasn't especially close to any of them. It's also the browser game I used to play OSR as. As you might remember, Savering called me out on an OSRS pin I was wearing. It was honestly just out of habit. Definitely not stemming from some distant wish that someone would recognize and approach me. Definitely. By the way, my character was an Iron Man. Me and I couldn't interact with other players in any way. All by choice. Says a lot about me, huh? I'm a rare case, and I know it. I used to keep myself before this. And the internet being gone has affected me less than most, I'm sure. I keep thinking I'm normal, but when I look at the people in my uni class, I realize how much people relied on the internet for things as important as friendship. I realize that maybe I'm not. They were connected to the internet, connected to their friends 24 hours a day. And now there was nothing like that. And on top of that, most had suffered losses. It's understandable things aren't the way they were anymore. As for me, both before and after 2018, Grace was always there for me, and that was good enough for me. I couldn't have asked for a better friend. A normal school day comes to an end. The long lecture at the end of it made me space out completely, and believe it or not, made me forget about saying goodbye to Savoring. Without her, I've learned this is exactly the type of thing that could come back and bite me. As I wait for the boss. Hey. Oh shit. Just stutter? No, no, why would I? I shrug awkwardly without me the fierce glance that was so blatantly shot my way. Because you left without a word. You didn't tell me you were going home, which means you probably forgot, and now you feel awkward about it, as you should. Yeah, uh, I forgot, my bad. It's okay. I don't expect much of you anymore anyway. But don't get me wrong, I like you quite a bit. You're easy to get along with. In fact, you're a lot like a pet to me. Your simple and convenient company, but actually anything beyond that is reasonable to expect from an animal. I blow up my cheeks and exhale as the truth cuts into my heart. So what are you doing here? Don't tell me the only reason you came here is to verbally spank me for my insolence. No. Spanking, though, you'd like that, wouldn't you? You're the type, I can tell. I'm going to work. It hasn't been very busy lately, so I thought maybe you want to try my new roll cake recipe. It's got saffron... 
cream filling and a lemon zest finish. Sounds amazing. I would, but today I actually can't. It's my turn to cook at home, and Grace will have my head if dinner's not ready when she gets back. If you got a part-time job like me, you'd have an excuse not to cook at all. The you'd have an excuse not to cook all the time. Just saying. I like the way you think. By the way, I've been meaning to ask you something. Why do you dress your mom by her name? Grace. I suppress a laugh. It comes out a scoff. She's not my mom. She's nothing like my mom. Then who is she? Your sister? No, not that either. Wait, how come you're not assuming she's my girlfriend? That's by far the most obvious answer considering the conditions. Oh, honey. I die a bit. On the inside. Got it. Then I cry a bit. On the inside. So? I don't know how to answer her. To most, the circumstances of Grace's and my living situation is probably quite strange. How do I explain this the best way? Sugar Mama? No. I guess the easiest way of explaining it is like this. My family was in an accident when I was 13. Do you want to hear about it? If not, you want to stop me now. Until the bus arrives, you got my ear. Okay, here goes. It was after school. I was still in my classroom reading as usual. Grace, my newly graduated homeroom teacher at the time, approached me. In here, she let me know about a call she had just received regarding my family. She brought me with her and stayed with me the entire evening. Then, when the curtains had fallen on the worst day of my life, she fed me, held me, and invited me to stay the night at her place. I tried to keep my tone of voice neutral, but it seemed increasingly difficult. I choke on emotion for a brief moment. Savory looks like she wants to say something, but soon I keep going. I know this is probably more than you asked for, but I might as well finish the story now. That one night turned into a week, and the week into a month, into a year. I mean, I didn't exactly have a family to go back to anymore. I shrug awkwardly. She has been my single pillar of support for years. She's my best friend. Savory doesn't say anything for a good while. Her eyes stay calm yet deep. Then she gives me a simple affirmation. I see. I'm sorry for your loss. It's in the far past, but thank you. I scan her body language. No signs that can be interpreted as if she's suffered similar losses. Then I see my bus approaching behind Savoring. This is me. I nudge towards the bus. Well, I'll be off then. See you tomorrow. See you. Later that evening, I put a hearty meal consisting of meatballs and potatoes on the dinner table, and Grace returned from work. For some reason, I was especially happy to see her, so I gave her my full smile, the one I save for rare occasions. Hey. Hey, oh, you're in a good mood. Well, yeah, you're home. She looks embarrassed I put her on the spot. Aren't you sweet? What did I do to deserve this? You're you. She giggles. My god, Michael, stop. Tired. Absolutely, you? Not too bad. After putting away her bag and changing clothes, she sat down in front of me. Looks good. Did you put mustard in them? Just a little bit. The way you like it. She puts her hands together in excitement and proceeds to stuff her mouth full. I decide to break the slight tension I created with my flattery comments. Hey, I've been thinking about something. Do you think I should get a part-time job? She takes a while to reply, but then shrugs. Sure, why not? You get some extra cash to spend on books or whatever you do with your money nowadays. Yeah. But if this is about guilt over not paying any rent, then don't worry about it. You know how cheap our lifestyle is. She gives me a wink. And besides, I'll have you know I'm making quite a bit of money nowadays. It's not, but thanks. So I guess Savorine was right with the sugar mama thing. It is. Mostly, but not entirely. No, you don't have any connections you can be in touch with, do you? As a government employee, I'm sure she knows in which direction to look, at least. For a part-time job? Yeah. I pick up a meatball with my fork and bite off half of it. Savory, tender and juicy. I did a great job. Well? She tilts her head slightly as if trying to recall something. There was something I heard about a while back. I think they're setting up a new division for dealing with some of the problems the, the reformation has brought. I heard they were looking for younger people, preferably university students. Maybe you're the perfect fit, being in sociology and all. 
Sounds interesting, then, I guess. If you feel ready for something like that, I can try to find out more. Yeah, why not? Can't hurt to look into it, at least. Thanks, Grace. Of course. And thank you for the food. It was delicious. She sits down her knife and fork, then exhales. Oh yeah, that's another thing to consider. I'd probably have less time to cook. I don't even think that highly of my cooking. When put next to someone like Savory, although she's not really a cook, I'm an amateur. I'm sure she has some cooking tricks up her sleeve regardless. You don't play around with butter for that many hours without learning a thing or two. Or gain a lot of weight. Though it does make me wonder what she'd think of my cooking and what I think of hers. We'll survive. We'll cook in batches. She gives me a sweet smile. A comforting smile. The kind of smile where I know she's got my back no matter what. Good idea. Then she yawns. Oh, guess today was rough. I'll go to bed early tonight. I'll take care of the dishes. Go read or whatever you want to do. I approve of this luxurious treatment. You're like a stand-in boyfriend. She says so jokingly, but the atmosphere turns a bit stiff. We're not related, nor do I see her as some kind of parental figure. She's undoubtedly an attractive woman, and I'm sure she knows it. And I know she knows I think so, too. There was one time, a summer or two ago, where she had been out drinking with fellow teachers. Well, probably intellectual people, I'd got the impression that they weren't too fun in after-work scenarios. I'll be honest with you, when I taught, it was so freaking awkward to be with teachers after hours. I'm not going to give you guys the stories now, but I did my damnedest to stay out of public with them. She had been rather drunk, but in spite of this, she had wanted me to keep her company at the kitchen table. She drunkenly said she'd have another beer or two to round off the evening. I was comfortable with it. It wasn't the first time, nor was it the last, but this particular time, she had let quite a few things slip. Things Sober Grace never would have. I still remember the exact words. What if I get a boyfriend? You'd have to move out, wouldn't you? Or what if one day, you were to become my boyfriend? But can I ask you something and be honest? So far I'd been doing alright, but what exited her mouth and next completely threw me off. You find me attractive, don't you? I've seen the way you look at me sometimes. She had tilted her head a bit, and gestured her pose seductively. The thing I remember the clearest was the sad look in her eye that told me she was desperate for affirmation. But she had been picture perfect, framed in a way to flaunt her womanhood to the fullest, her generous bust making the dress shirt seem to be on the brink of bursting at the seams. It had been a minor distraction to me the whole time, but it turned major and my gaze had magnetically started to wander in that very same vicinity. I remember being in shock at her words in Act 2. Nothing she had ever let on could compare to what she had just said. Our friendship had always been quite innocent. She hadn't been wrong. I did find her attractive in every way, always had, still do, how could I not? She had all the things you could want in a woman. She's almost overbearingly caring and considerate. A negative trait to some, but to me, that's always been a plus. I don't think I could ever get fed up with being spoiled by her. Anyone would be lucky to be with her. Anyone would love to be spoiled by her. That I was sure of from the very bottom of my heart. So that's what I had told her drunken self that night. She broke down crying. Sorry, bad joke. Thanks for taking care of the dishes. She gets up from the table and heads towards her room, doing her usual goofy head gesture behind her. But I know she's just acting calm. Memories of the night had for sure passed through her head just now, just like they had for me. It never got farther than that. We never got further than that. One thing is for certain, though. There is still a tension that neither of us want to talk about. What that tension is, and the extent of it, is unknown to me. I wonder if it'll ever come to light. As the seconds pass, my heartbeat slows down and returns to normal. Stand in boyfriend now. Lunch break. As Savoring and I awaited the bus stop for a quick ride to a restaurant dense neighborhood not too far off from here, I spot someone I recognize. Wait, is that Grace? Across the road, walking towards the parking lot, I see a well dressed woman fitting Grace's body type. Long, light brown hair sways behind her with each step. 
She's just passed one of the new police boxes. Don't ask me. I've never met her. It has got to be her. Grace. I yield towards the woman. She turns around, shoots me a confusing look, smiles, and begins to make her way across the road. Hey, you're on your break? I can see Grace's natural reflex to come up and hug me being held back. Instead, she glances in Savoring's direction, a small smirk. You must be Savoring. Nice to meet you. Hello? Her tone seems flatter than usual. They exchange a handshake all the while staring into each other's eyes. You've got soft hands. What cream are you using? And you've got nice pink lips. What stick are you using? Am I sensing some kind of female rivalry? And they're fighting over me? Am I a harem protagonist now? With just a touch of imagination, I can see the 3P ending right before my eyes. Hands, mouth, stick, all that stuff. I awake from my daze by noticing that drool has started to form around the side of my mouth. In that exact moment, they both turn their heads towards me and shoot me a disgusted look. Oh, just when I thought this couldn't get any better. Oh, don't put me on a spot like that, you know it's my weakness. What? What? Nothing, nothing at all. Carry on. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Maybe it's time for one of those forced conversation starters again. So how come you're around these parts? Think about becoming a uni teacher? Grace smiles and shakes her head. Oh no, I was actually inquiring about what we talked about yesterday. They're not, they've not yet updated the stateside system on our phones, which includes available jobs, so I had to go do it manually. Thank god I'm not one of you normal people, though. You two, however, should get used to it. Even if you get this job, Michael, it'll be quite a while before you get one of these. She giggles as she taps her new phone. Nice. That's right, I got it today, as predicted. To be honest, not much is working as intended right now, but they're saying it'll be fixed soon. Me being normal, what has the world come to? Don't give me that moody drill. You're normal enough. She laughs again and touches my shoulder. Then she turns to Savoring and whispers. He's not one bit normal, honestly. You ought to take care, and don't get physical with him. That's his favorite. Hey, what kind of treacherous rumors are you spreading? You want me to devolve in some quiet boy with no friends again? Because this is how you do it. Oh, I see no reason for anyone to be on edge here. I'm sure we can figure out a favorable exchange for everyone involved. Savoring's smile turns sadistic, and it makes me shiver. Please stop toying with me. I'll have you know my heart is as vulnerable as anyone's. Grace bursts out laughing. Oh yeah, I might as well let you know now. I've gotten you in. Apparently they had quite a few positions unfilled. She takes out a small note and jots down a few lines. Go here tomorrow morning before class. Tell her I sent you. Oh, really? Do I have to know the secret knock? She passes me the note and smiles. Don't blow it. I should get going. My break is over soon. See you later, and it was nice to meet you, Savoring. Likewise. And so Grace makes an exit. Soon the bus arrives. We get on, and the bus takes off towards the next stop. So you are getting a part-time job. Tired of cooking for her? Not at all. I just feel like I should get one. She seems nice. That she is. And her body is ridiculous. That... Wait, is this a trick question of some sort? I would never. I expected silence to reign until our stop, but I got something else. By the way, can I come with? To what? The job thing? Yeah. Sure. Why, though? I'll apply for it, too. Seems interesting. And as students of the human mind, we should get experience where we can. I... Two part-time jobs along with the university's studies? Well, it is savoring we're talking about. Well, sure, I guess. As long as you don't make me compete with you. Because we both know that wouldn't end well. For you? Yes, yes, indeed, savoring. For me. I was going to let that part go unsaid. I don't see the point in that. Naturally. After that came the silence I'd expected. We found the restaurant block, had lunch, and finished our day of school. Then it was Saturday. As we decided earlier in the week, Grace and I were heading out for lunch. I was told that during our first few days of wearing her uniform, that during the first few days of wearing her uniform, Grace had gotten lots of looks and people coming up with her to her with questions. 
Even though it just been a few days, most people have begun to acclimate. Still, she receives a few looks on the bus. Though I'm not sure if it's due to the uniform or the fact that Grace is, well, Grace. She leans towards me and whispers. I feel like a famous person or something. Never thought I'd get this kind of attention as a teacher, but I'm okay with that. You should be. Good teachers are underappreciated. You're underappreciated, I think to myself. Maybe I dress too casually. I bet they're wondering what you're doing with me. Casually? You look cute. Just because I'm wearing a uniform doesn't mean my cute little brother has to. That's our cover story, okay? Because honestly, it's way easier for a stranger to digest than the truth. Well, she's not wrong. Got it. As soon as we arrived at the small restaurant we had our eyes set on, we were met by the owner. Seemed as if he was the one and only person working at the rustic little pop-up shop. When we first saw the restaurant, Grace had whispered to me, Maybe we should have gone for something a bit more established? It was true. I don't think this was what either of us had expected when we made the plans, but after the bus ride we were both hungry, so we dealt. So you're a state employee, and you're hungry? Yes, quite so. I work at Inray City High School. Been told I have to give you a discount. If I don't, they said they'd call my mother. Little do they know that my mother died years ago. You won't get any special discounts here, I'm afraid. Oh? I looked at Grace. She wasn't quite sure how to proceed. This was all just new to her as it was to everyone else. Well, we're hungry. It's fine. Two privilege ignoring portions at full price coming up. The man moves back and forth with his little stall, condiments flying, broth streams into our bowls. He places the bowls in front of us. Enjoy. If you'll excuse me, I haven't had dinner myself, so I'll take a short leave. I'll trust you two to keep my stall safe, government employee and all. I wouldn't trust the government with that. His words took a spiteful turn by the end of that sentence. He looked smug, as if Grace had tried to flaunt her status even though she really hadn't. Alrighty. He leaves us be. What a nutter. I try not to spe speak e ill of people, but God, what a bitter old man. But let's not have that ruin our meal. You know what? I have a better idea. Grab your meal and follow me. See, isn't this much nicer? I'll return with the bowl and cutlery when we're done. Let's eat here. Pretty view. We begin to eat in peace, letting the old man's nine comments fade away into the past, into nothingness, where negativity belongs. Oh, right. Grace stops chewing, puts her hand in front of her mouth, and swallows. Then she points over the mountains to the west of us. Did you know? There's a hot spring resort run by an elderly pair up there. I think it's called Blue Mist Resort. Way up the mountains. I don't know if that's a reference to winter stories or something. Well, somewhere along the path from here to there, at least. Anyway, there was a rumor going around the teacher's lounge. It said that if you're of sufficient rank, you get a great discount at one of the hot spring resorts up there. The rumor also said that Elena, you know the school district said, had been spotted going there by someone's relative who's a shuttle driver, with a man no less. Most of my fellow teachers are only of emerald rank, and I learned that the cutoff point for that specific perk is, you guessed it, Ruby. They were so envious of me when that got out. Let's be real. Female envy of you surely isn't uncommon. Did you say something? A wave crashed against the shore the moment you opened your mouth. Nope. So, you wanna go sometime? For like a weekend or something? Just you and me? Just Grace and her cute little brother? It'd be my treat. That's what the entire story led up to. Let's expect something more sensational and dramatic. Rude. So? You mean it's a vacation or something? Or something. Sure, why not? Sometime. Alright. She sparkles overjoyed at my answer. I know it's partially because she likely doesn't have anyone else she wants to go with. Going places with Grace is always exciting. She's definitely the sanguine kind, and despite being quite a few years older than I am, has more childlike energy than I do. Oftentimes I say yes, not because I'm terribly excited about the destination, but because I'm excited to spend more time with Grace. Oftentimes in things I find pointless, she finds meaning. I've always admired that part of her. At the same time, I've always lamented me being the way I am. My point is the following. She's a fun person to be with. And I'm a city kid. I have vague memories of going around the island with my parents when I was very little, but I can't recall doing so even once since then. For that reason alone, I thought I should say yes. I think, do think it's about time I explore and read up on the island on which I've lived all my life. After the 
shock I received earlier in the week. The idea of being alone with her in a hot spring resort definitely doesn't send my mind right into places of depravity. And it did without a doubt not play any part in my answer, hand to heart. By the way, good luck tomorrow. Hope it works out for you. for Savory to meet me outside of the building. I looked down at my watch. It seems she's running late. Guess we won't make the best of first impressions, but that's alright, I suppose. Savory's charisma is sure to win them over anyway. I'm more worried for myself. This neighborhood could have been anything prior to this. Now it looks like someone swooped in, purchased it all, leaving everything looking barren. I imagine that's exactly what happened, actually. But the windows have been cleaned and the ground swept. Something was going on around here. Sorry I'm late. Hair dryer wouldn't turn on, so I had to do it manually. There was a tinge of disgust in her voice. Manually. I shrug. It's probably fine. Morning. Morning. Her hair does indeed not look as neat as usual. Still more neat than most people's for sure. But it's an odd sight. Her standards are usually astronomically high for most things, hair neatness included. For how much longer are you going to stare at me? I'm aware my hair's a mess. It's frankly quite embarrassing. Hair. Mess. I hadn't even noticed. Lies. She seemingly decides to leave it at that. In her hand is a canned coffee of the kind... of the brand Kabir's Max Your Day. Calling me surprised. If that's a reference, it's gone over my head. She brings it up to chest level and cracks it open. Looking away, she takes a sip from it. So, this is where Grace sent us? Yeah, pretty anonymous, huh? Looks dead. Sure does. Let's go inside. First thing we're met with is a reception, staffed by a single woman. Welcome to the Department of New Integration. How can I help you? Grace sent us. I'm Savarine. This is Michael. We're here for the part-time job. Ah, yes. Indeed you are. She glanced at us with a hint of something unidentifiable. I expected one, but I got two. Both first-year sociology students, I assume. I nod. IDs, please. It catches me off guard, we hand them over without a word. Thank you. I assume you've already understood the gist of what your job will entail. Not exactly. I was told there were problems to be solved from the internet reformation. Oh, yes, there are. Many, many problems. Your job will be to solve them and help people adapt. Help people adapt? Right you are. It's a very delicate task. You'll be meddling in other people's lives. There's a great deal of responsibility involved. If that's not something you're up for, feel free to walk out the door right now. She paused for a second, clearly gauging our reactions. Nothing. So I take it you're interested. We nod in unison. So, when will we meet our manager? We already have. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have known. You'll be reporting directly to me, and you'll be assigned cases only by me, and luckily for you, to make a team. We got the job? Anything concerning your work here is strictly between us. Should you, by some strange event, receive a task that isn't assigned by me, you should be no by no means carried out and report back to me immediately. Basically, it's not complicated. I'm your boss, no one else. And the reason I'm your boss is because I'm the only person with authority here. Strange vibes hit me. Is that a roundabout way of saying you're the only one here? I never said that. I said I'm the only person with authority here. The woman produces two documents and presents them before us. These include non-disclosure agreements. If you want the job, please sign. Pens in each of our hands. Savoring signs a contract without missing a beat. I hesitate for a moment, however. Is there a problem? Forgotten how to spell your name? Uh, no. I'm pretty sure it starts with an M. What's the pay, even? Twenty bucks an hour flat, tax money. Not bad at all, for not even finished de a degree. I know, right? Aren't you lucky? Make sure to thank Grace. Something about all this just feels a bit strange, and I can't seem to shake it. But I decided to sign it. After all, she's exactly right. Grace referred us here. Grace wouldn't lead us straight into some dodgy operation. Although I'd argue dealing with the government in general is dodgy. Great! Now listen carefully. 
You might have signed the papers, but I'd like to stress the importance of you following the correct procedures. We're... no, I am a new branch. As you can tell, my resources are limited, to say the least. In fact, we need to produce good results to keep afloat, and that means no screw-ups. Screw up and you're likely to get this whole thing shut down, get it? That means throwing everything I've worked for out the window. Do not let that happen. Never forget you're an extension of the state, and that's all you are. At least, while on the clock. Understood? By the way, my name is Isabel. I'll be your boss for the foreseeable future. Oh yeah, I suppose I should welcome you. Welcome. That's a second thought to her, huh? Without giving us a chance to reply, she goes on. Moving on, the case I would hand over to you should be an easy one. The purpose is for you to get a grasp on how we work with our patients. First order business, diagnosis. The question I want you to ask yourselves when you meet the client is the following. Are we qualified to help this person? The truth of the matter is, not everyone can be helped. Not by you, at least. There will be times where there's not really nothing you can do, and we don't want to subject anyone to that. It'll do no one good. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Once you've met the person and you've together decided which direction to go, you return to me. You'll then present the case to me, your impressions of the client, and your possible solutions to their problems. It may mean handing the case over to another branch, like the mental health one, wherein several psychologists work. Remember, you're a team. If you are not unified in your act before me, I will lose confidence in you. You don't want that. It could mean me taking you off the case, reassigning you into different separate teams, or worst case scenario, firing you. When you're on duty, you're an extension of me, and I'm an extension of the state of Inray Island. Do not ever forget this. Seemingly being done with her explanation, she places a folder on the desk before us. Take this and look over it together. Don't disappoint me. I'll see you again when you've completed your diagnosis. Good luck. I'm kind of nervous. Don't be. It's mostly a useless emotion. Focus on the task, not your feelings. Though I have to admit, I'm not too sure about this myself. I'm not the most social person. Sometimes I offend people, even if I don't mean to. I suppose it'd be bad if that happened to with one of our patients. Because not only our reputation's on the line, everyone above us in the hierarchy is risking theirs too, like Grace and Isabel. Yeah, the pressure's on, I suppose. Also, what's up with all this? I make gestures towards the building. Savoring habitually places her hand on her stomach. I know she does this when she gets unsure or uncomfortable about something. I suppose she's a lot like me in that regard. She likes facts. Who knows? Maybe it's like you said, they're a new branch. I guess. I look down at my watch. Grace should have left for work by now. Are we going to my place or yours? Putting it like that makes it seem like there are only two options available. Don't be deceptive, Michael. I... Your place. Let's go. But before that, I need to get more coffee. Don't worry about that. There's some in my place. Oh, really? How suspiciously considerate of you. Now, I don't really understand why she'd say such a thing, but I opt to keep quiet. I have a feeling I'll find out very shortly anyway. With savory, and I always do. No stones are ever left unturned. I'm very disappointed in you, Michael. She grabs a jar of instant coffee, moves it to her side of the table, and begins to scoop spoonful after spoonful into her cup. One, two, three. Uh, is, uh... She locks eyes with me. Four, five. Is, is your heart going to be okay after that? Six, seven. Then she stops. Seven is a good number. And you brought me to this fate. I... This is how I like my coffee. If you have something negative to say about it, I'd rather you keep your mouth shut. She tops off the seven teaspoons of instant coffee with boiling water all the way to the brim. Remember, it's your fault. I wanted real coffee, but your household is too primitive to provide us with it. Real coffee, huh? So you mean either canned coffee or that specific brand of that specific brand you like, or a premium coffee on buffet or a broke boy's budget. I scratch my head and smile awkwardly. Well, not all instant coffee is created equal. Give it a try before complaining. The dark liquid, and I really do mean pitch black in the middle of the night, dark liquid touches her pink lips. She takes a small sip. No reaction. Let me guess, too sour, too bitter, too roasted, too many damn spoonfuls of the powder? It's alright. For low-grade coffee like yours. But for only one dollar, I could have had a extra day premium canned coffee. For a single dollar, you could have kept your pride, Michael. Now you just 
joined me yet once again, and I'm getting used to it. It's not a good position to find yourself in, truthfully. Yeah, no, but I feel like now's a good time to inform you that I've never met someone more inclined to disappointment than you. So just the fact that I'm not a disappointment to you on a daily basis is good enough for me. Well, actually... Did you hear that? Huh? That was the sound of my heart breaking. You're cruel, Savoring. Thank you. If we like some pen of frustration about each other, it was time to shift the attention to the task ahead of us. I place the folder on the tabletop between us. Do you want to go first, or shall I? I'll do the reading. She sweeps the folder off the table, opens it, and begins to read out loud. Rose Jenner, 20. Full-time streamer, cute. It, it's in writing that she's cute. Yeah. That sure is strange. Imagine being so cute the government signs put in their official papers. Savory glares at me, clearly disappointed. Of course it's not written in here, idiot. I was just adding some personal flair. Just shut up and listen, alright? You got it. She's got over 100,000 followers on that one streaming site. That makes her relatively popular. Well, had and made, I suppose. It says here it took her four years to get to that point. Savory mumbles under her breath. No wonder someone like that would have trouble accustoming. Apparently she hasn't come out of her apartment since March 1st. Her mother's apparently worried sick because she won't open her door to her either. In fact, she's the one who filed a report for her to be evaluated. Her mother wishes for us to assist her in reintegrating into society. So, can I speak now? Depends. On what? On whether it's something useful or the usual. Fifth paper cut of the day might be a new record. How does she even get food? All the delivery options that can be arranged from a distance are gone. They simply don't exist anymore. The new system doesn't allow for such services. So they got rid of phone numbers? Well, let's see. Savoring flips a few pages and runs her finger along the text. According to her mother, the last thing she did was to arrange for groceries to be delivered to her door for a whole six months. So she planned for this. So it wasn't a spur of the moment thing, then. Seems like it. Six months. That makes her sole lifeline last another f only four months. After that, she'd either have to go outside or starve to death. But we shouldn't wait an entire four months. Her mental health might have declined to a worrying state by then. Maybe she's already having doubts. Maybe she just needs someone, someone like us, to push her over the edge. I'll do that literally. It's a possibility. But if she wouldn't even talk to her own mother... Who knows what kind of relationship they have, though. It might be because of her mother that she's de so desperate to cling onto the path she's paid for herself. You're right. I assume everyone's on good terms with their parents because I am. Was. A dark blanket spreads out across the room. There, there, you're alright. For now, we have someone else that needs our help more. Yeah, sorry. She doesn't say another word but Sank gets up and starts walking towards the hallway. Let's go. I'd say we reach a conclusion. We have. Don't worry, I'll do the talking. And before we go, don't forget to change. Can I borrow your bathroom? Yeah, down to the left. She better not be shooting up in there. Case 1, Rose Jenner.